Hi everyone and welcome to another video. In today's video I'm back in Liverpool, a very sunny Liverpool, for another shoot with my friend Demi. In today's video I'm going to be testing out my new lens which I am hoping is going to give me the best bokeh of any lens that I own. Will that be the case though? We will find out in this video. So if you're kind enough to follow me and my work, you will know that I love creative bokeh and flair. And I'm often striving to find the best lenses that will allow me to achieve that. One of my gripes about modern day lenses, certainly for the Sony lineup, is that they're just too good. They don't allow sun flare to come in because they have coating on the lens and they're actively trying to stop the sun flare, whereas I want the sun flare. But also the bokeh is just very, very perfect and I love imperfect bokeh, something that just looks a little bit more creative and arty. So in the past to try and help me with that I've invested in the Canon 50mm 1.2 which is an amazing portrait lens especially when the light is low. When the sun is low in the sky this lens gives amazing sun flare as you'll see in these photographs. In fact I would say this is probably my favourite portrait lens now and I've also bought the Helios 44 2 lens lens as well, which even though it's only $50, gives really cool bokeh and again lets loads of sun flare in. So I love the photographs that this can take as you'll see in these examples. But I would say I do have a bit of an addiction when it comes to trying to find the best lens for bokeh. So while searching online, I did some Google searches for literally what is the best lens for bokeh. And if you have any suggestions, by the way, please do let me know in the comments because I don't think I'll ever quite be satisfied. But the lens that I've just bought and literally have just got out of the packet today, this morning, is the Lomography Petsville 55mm 1.7 lens. And I'm really, really excited to try this lens out. It's a completely manual lens which means it's got to be pretty tricky to use but that's part of the fun of it. It has three dials on the side and two of them are very common for a manual lens. So we've got focus control which is this one here, the aperture ring but, and this is the really exciting thing, we also have a ring on the side here for bokeh control. So you can literally change the look of the bokeh by twisting the lens round. And that is the thing that I am really, really excited about. So my plan today is I'm in a really beautiful park in Liverpool. The sun is shining, which is really handy. And I'm meeting my friend Demi, who you might recognize from these photographs. I'm going to be meeting Demi in about an hour and in the meantime I'm just going to wander around this park and just take some test shots with this lens, just get some practice in with it before Demi arrives. I'm really excited and just keeping everything crossed that this gives me the images that I'm hoping that it will. We will see. One thing that I have realized is that as with any manual focus lens, focusing is quite tricky. So it's really handy if your camera allows it to turn on focus peaking, because what that will do is allow you to see the areas of the photograph that are in focus when you're looking through the viewfinder. It's a massive help, so turn on focus peaking. I'm really excited for tonight's shoot now. I don't know why companies don't make lenses that are this much fun anymore. The big companies I mean, Nikon, Canon, Sony, sort your acts out. <laughs> So 
Oh, first impressions are, I absolutely love this lens. It is so much fun to use. The bokeh control is amazing. I love that so far. There are seven settings for the bokeh control, which all give a slightly different look. My favorite so far, just from messing around in the park and taking photographs of flowers, is number one, because it massively makes the bokeh really swirly. It's something you're either going to love or you're going to hate, but at the moment, I really love that look. It's just so different and creative. And these are only photographs of flowers so far. So I'm now going back to the car to meet up with Demi and then we'll get some really good stuff, I'm sure. <laughs> Just looking straight down the lens for me. Gorgeous down there. So we've just finished the shoot now. That was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, mainly because focusing manually is so difficult, especially when Demi was backlit by either the sun or the speed lights, because focus peaking doesn't really work very well when the lighting is, is really harsh like that. So I've realized I've never used focus peaking before. So it feels as though only like one in every 10 shots or so was, was in focus. But I think the ones that are in focus are going to be really nice. What was funny though is for a time, I shot with the Canon 50 1.2 obviously with its amazing autofocus and that felt like a dream in comparison to the manual focusing of the Petsville. But as I said earlier in the video, the Petsville lens is a very unique lens. It's a fun lens. It's not a lens that you're going to be using all the time. So for portraits, I still think it could be a lens that is really good to have in your bag, but just know that they do, that it does have limitations, especially if you're shooting wide open, which I was do most of the time. It's a 1.7 lens. And at the end of the day, why would you want to shoot a lens like that, not wide open? Of course you're gonna shoot wide open, but that's when the focus gets really difficult. When I stopped down to say F5, it was a bit better, but it's not really as fun shooting at F5. So I apologize to Demi for taking forever to get just a handful of shots, but I'm really pleased what we did get. So here are some of my favorites.
So the jury is still out on this lens, but it's one that I'm going to persist with and hopefully get right in the future. It just needs a bit more practice, I think. So thank you very much, Demi, for your help tonight. You were amazing as always. Here's Demi's Instagram if you want to go and give her a follow. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. The embarrassing thing for any YouTuber, got to come back and pick up the camera. <laughs>